guys, how's it going? So today I'm planting three pink mink clematis. What is that sound? Is that on our property? Ooh. <gasps> oh my word. Well, that couldn't have fallen in a better spot. This is proof that this tree needs to come out. For anybody who's wanting to hate on the fact that we moved, <laughs> removed trees, this is why right here. Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm planting three pink mink clematis that I've got right here on this table up against this wall. Now this wall has kind of been my nemesis over the last three years. I've not been able to figure out exactly what I wanted to do with it. Like, do I hang some artwork, a beautiful concrete plaque? I've got a table right here, a concrete table, and then a big Japanese maple tree in a, in a container. And I don't know, it just kind of threw me off and I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with it. But I think I've come up with the perfect solution. So I was rooting around on Gardner Supplies website and I found these gorgeous giant trellises. They are nine feet tall and I think they're called the nine foot giant trellis. And they are not very expensive. Like I think that the design is beautiful. So I got three of them to line up on this wall for my clematis. So let me place these so you guys can get an idea of what they look like. I actually think they look beautiful with nothing on them, really. Okay, it's about where the first one needs to go. Isn't that gonna look gorgeous? Now these aren't placed exactly where I want them. Um, we will measure and everything before we install, but these had a few things going for them that really made me think that it was the right thing for this wall. First of all, they're nine feet tall. So they fill up a good portion of this wall, um, which that was kind of my problem because if I uh, decided to go with artwork, it would need to be something huge or like a grouping of pictures or something like that to fill up enough space. Um, Cause I couldn't put just one picture, this wall would swallow it up. Um, so I think that these fill it up beautifully. Um, also they're two and a half, I think feet wide or really close to that. So I was able to put three in um, instead of just two, like it was the perfect area to do a grouping of three. They have brackets on them. So each trellis, they come in three pieces. So you can see right here is where the bottom connects to the middle section. Middle section connects to the top right there really easy to put together um, and then the four brackets so there's one here on each side and then one up here on each side which when we install them to the wall it means it'll bump that trellis out from the wall about this much so there'll be airflow behind the vines which is really nice and it won't be smack up against the house and i don't have to lean it you know a lot of trellises you put them up against something and you either need to fashion something yourself to attach them to the surface um, or you have to lean them, which you know can be a problem if the vine starts to get too heavy, it can pull them back the opposite direction. Um, so I think that these are going to be beautiful here. Now the other thing, um, before we install them, uh, we've had extensive conversations about how we should install them. Like, do we, do we center them based on the width of the wall or do we use the tree and bump them over further this way because it actually does look better aesthetically to have them moved over and not centered on the wall. And that's what we ended up going with just because, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it if we ever do lose this Japanese maple here. Likely I will come in and plant another tree in a container if that happens. So this design will probably always be okay. The fact that um, it's moved over a bit because you really can't see back in here. In fact, I'm not gonna even plant a clematis on this one right here. I'm only gonna plant um, one on these two right here. And then this one, because the pink mink variety does get quite wide, it'll kind of crawl onto that, but then you'll still be able to see the top corner. Um, so I think what we'll do first is we'll get these all installed so then we'll be ready to plant. And then I'll go over some of the specs on this clematis. This one's actually new to me, I'm super excited. And I think that they'll do really well in this area because I do have a clematis in a container right here, which just went out of bloom again, but it's been happy right there for like two or three years. So I think the clematis will like it here. Okay, so we did install them by eye since we're not going by any specific measurement on the wall, but we did make sure that they were all leveled up. I used this level right here just to make sure we were leveled this way and we lined them up along this wall, um, like seam right there so that we were all kind of lined up here. We also did not anchor them into the ground. And the reason for that is you can see right down here, 
that they're just hanging here. We figured since they're gonna be installed like anchored to the wall, we didn't really need to anchor them into soil. And this right here underneath this middle trellis, there's a little piece of concrete that comes out from underneath the house, just a little piece to where we wouldn't been, have been able to push this one down in. These two would have been fine, this one we were having an issue with. So we figured this was the way to go. Plus a little bit more height doesn't hurt us because this wall is so tall. I did notice the top piece on these two, you can kind of see them bowing out from the wall a little bit. Um, because there's no bracket on the top, I think I'm gonna just use a cup hook. I'll just get a ladder out later, put a cup hook in the wall and then use some wire or some really strong fishing line just to tie back both of these pieces so that they're more parallel to this one. Like this one is perfect. It lays completely flat. Um, and so I want these to look exactly like this one. Um, so now I'm going to plant my clematis and I just wanted to share a couple of details about these. So like I said, it's called pink mink, really sweet pink flowers. They usually bloom early summer through early fall. And um, they're not blooming right now because they're in their cans. Um, I saw some blooms on them earlier. They don't you know, perform the same when they're in their nursery cans as opposed to being in the ground. Um, they are a zone four through nine, so very winter hardy. Um, and this is kind of like a no-brainer type of clematis because you can cut this one back all the way to about 18 to 24 inches tall in the spring, right as it's starting to push new growth. And that way you'll actually end up with blooms from the bottom of the plant all the way to the top instead of just having blooms right at the top. Um, now, not every clematis you can treat that way, but this specific variety you can. Um, and I did talk with the grower because I've not personally planted this variety before. And she said this was the perfect variety for a situation like this because they grow nine to 10 feet tall and six to six and a half feet wide. So I think they're gonna do really great right here. So I've got my shovel and my biotone starter fertilizer right over here. So I think we'll just get these planted. I'm gonna see if I can just work around that hosta. I might have to move the hosta out from underneath this trellis a little bit, but we'll see. There might be enough room to sneak it in. Oh, see this concrete now. Oh, it's a, is it a stepping stone? Maybe. Oh, so we could have anchored them into the soil maybe. Oh, you know what? I remember they had a fountain here at one point, a wall fountain. So this is probably the base. I didn't even remember that. Well, just got ourselves another stepping stone. Looking in this hole, I think the clematis is gonna be extremely happy because they like moist but well-drained soil. And you can see that this soil right here uh, it has some moisture in it, but it's definitely not soggy. So I think this is a perfect situation. Wow. Now that's a root system. I am going to break this up just a little bit. I'll probably spend some time later kind of unfurling these and maybe separating them a bit. Okay, second one. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this project. I'm just so thrilled to have found something that fits this space so well, that's so pretty at the same time. Like honestly, wouldn't need to have a vine that would cover it all the way because it is so decorative. I mean, I love the swoops at the top. Um, and it'll just be fun to see this. Now, I don't feel like I need to have an umbrella on the, at this table, which I've never really loved to have an umbrella here. Um, I always wanted to be able to have, you know, my succulent centerpiece here and be able to enjoy that, but it was always kind of pushed to the side. So now we've got it all taken care of. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.